everyone in the previous class we have discussed about coulomb's law that is uh, we found that f is equal to k q1 q2 by r square and we have also discussed about electrostatic constant accordingly we have discussed the electric permittivity and we found that the coulomb's law is nothing but the electrostatic force between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and we found an expression that f is equal to f is equal to we found f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 upon r square so this was the coulomb's law as you found in the previous class so f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by q2 and this can also be expressed as f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught this can be represent as k and this is q1 q2 by r square i told you that this k was electrostatic constant k was electrostatic constant and i gave you the numerical value of k also the numerical value of k was 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square this was the si unit of electrostatic constant k now if you want to find out this value k separately what is electrostatic constant k so it will be like that k is equal to f r square k is equal to f r square upon q1 q2 if we if we eliminate the k from here so this will be like that offsetting now it will be is very easy to find out the si unit of k though we have mentioned earlier the si unit of k is this is newton meter square per coulomb square now we can see how it is coming on from where it is coming so we found that k is equal to f r square by q1 q2 so in this reference i can put the product force we know that the value of uh, unit of force that is newton this is r square r square means your i mean distance so distance will give us meter square and this is q and q that means the si length of electric charge as we found is coulomb so this will be coulomb square so we can find it newton meter square per coulomb square it is exactly what i wrote here newton meter square per coulomb square and this is going to be the si unit of electrostatic constant k one more thing we found that this epsilon naught this epsilon naught i told you in the previous class that epsilon naught is the electric permittivity in free space remember electric permittivity in free space and the value of electric permittivity in free space will be 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 and very interestingly si unit of electrostatic permittivity or electric permittivity will be opposite to this unit this was newton meter square per coulomb square so this is going to be per newton per meter square and coulomb square so this is a very important relation between the unit of electrostatic constants and the electric permittivity so this was all about coulomb's law and its i mean necessary components then what he found that this is k is very important to understand remember this two value the value of k 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square from where this unit coming i have told you and the value of electric permittivity that is also 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 per newton per meter square coulomb square i think these two things you have cleared very nicely now we'll go to the next topic that we are supposed to discuss today that is the vector form of coulomb's law you kindly note it down vector forms of coulomb's law vector forms vector form of coulomb's law So this is the heading of this topic vector forms of coulomb's law do we have find the coulomb's law f is equal to k q1 q2 by r square now we'll 
express this vector express this coulomb's law in vector form so for that we know what is vector quantity that vector quantity have both direction and magnitude so in this case i will consider a coordinate systems suppose this is x axis this is y axis and this is your z axis and this is origin now i am having two charges this is a charge q1 and it have a position vector r1 what does position vector will be us the position vector should give us the distance from the origin from this charge here r1 r1 is the position vector i am taking one more charge that this charge is your q2 and this has got another position vector this is r2 that means you can write let us consider two charges q1 and q2 let us consider two charges q1 and q2 and their position vectors are respectively r1 and r2 let us consider two charges q1 and q2 and their position vectors are respectively r1 and r2 now if i consider that this q1 is exerting a force on q2 this charge q1 is exerting a force on q2 and as a reply this charge q2 is also exerting a force on q q q uh, q1 that means this is the force exerted by charge q1 over q2 and this will be expressed as f force on 2 by 1 this is f21 remember this 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 thing should be understood you should understand what does f21 means that means force on 2 by 1 and again repeating force on 2 by 1 that means this q1 charge is exerting force on q2 in which direction it is exerting it is exerting in the direction of from 1 to 2 that means the direction of it will be from R1 to remember this is R1 to what does this R1 to mean that means the directions of force that has been applied on Q2 by Q1 will be from 1 to 2 similarly according to Newton third law that means if Q1 applies a force on Q2 Q2 will also apply similar force on Q1 and this force will be expressed as F this times force on 1 F12 so this is F12 F12 means force on 1 by 2 that means charge Q2 has applied a force on Q1 and this is expressed as F12 and directions of the force will be from 2 to 1 so this is R21 here we have got two direction one is r12 that means r12 is the direction of force that has been applied by q1 to q2 and this is f21 and we have got next direction that is here r21 what does this r21 r21 means the force direction of the force from 2 to 1 that is 2 to 1 means the force has been applied on 1 by 2 that means this is f12 I am summing up this diagram again by explaining that let's consider two electric charges Q1 and Q2. Their position vectors from the origin of this coordinate systems are R1 and R2. Now Q1 and Q2, what they will do? The Q1 will exert a force that is F21, that is F21 means force on 2 by 1, and direction of this force is R12. At the same time, the force is also be applied by Q2 over Q1 and this force is F12 and direction of the force is R21. Now if we apply the Coulomb's law in this case, that means this times we have to apply Coulomb's law for two cases since the force is applied by Q1 to Q2 and Q2 to Q1. So if I write, let's consider F21. F21 
is the force F21 is the force on Q2 by Q1. This statement we should write that F21 is the force on Q2 by Q1. Therefore, according to, we can write in short form, this is according to Coulomb's law. According to Coulomb's law. So what was Coulomb's law? We can say that this times it is F21. So I can write force on 2 by 1. F21 is equal to, we had the formula, this is 1 by 4 by epsilon naught. This is Q1 upon Q2. The distance, when the force was applied from 2 to 1, this was the distance R12. This should be opposite, R12. This is vector and this will be square. You should not get confused in this case. What is R12? You should understand that when force was applied on 2 by 1, that means in this case force is applied on 2 by 1 in which direction? In direction 1, 2. That means F21 was applied in the direction of 1, 2. So I will put here the distance will be R square 1, 2. That is force on 2 by 1 and direction will be 1, 2. And we have to use the unit vector this is unit vector this is also r12 what does unit vector means in first year you have learned that unit vector is a type of vector which tells us the direction of the particular body that means this is r this is r cap r cap 1 2 this is number 1 similarly this is f21 and we have left now f12 so if we write now similarly f12 F12 is the force on Q1 by Q2. At the beginning, this is F21, and F21 is the force on Q2 by Q1. So it's the second case F12. F12 is the force on Q1 by Q2. So hopefully, according to Coulomb's law, therefore, we can write according to Coulomb's law. According to Coulomb's law, we can write that F12 is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught. The rest things are quite similar, Q2 by Q1. So here, the force is on 1 by 2. So the distance will be R factor square 2, 1. And the direction will be also R cap 2, 1. And this is number 2 equation. I think this uh, you have got clear. See, F21, the force on 2 by 1, direction is 1, 2. F12, force on 1 by 2, so direction is 2, 1. And similarly, the unit vector will take their own places. Now, one thing if you see in this diagram, you can clearly identify that this is R12. So if I see this is R12, R12 will be in this direction. That means this is R12. This is R12 will go in this direction, and this R21 is in this direction. So can I write one thing from here that I can write R21 is equal to minus of R12. I think it is easily understandable. You can easily understand why I have written R21 is equal to minus R12. Since their directions are opposite. This is R1, this is R21. R21 is moving on which direction? R21 is from this way. This is R21. And this is R12. That means their directions are quite opposite. So I can write that R21 is equal to minus of R12. I can rename this is as number 3 equation. Now if I put the value of R21, that means putting the value of R21 in number 2 equation. Putting the value of R21 in number 2 equation. This is number 2 equation and in this 2 equation if I put the value of R21 what I will find from 2 This is number 2 equation so we have it F of 1 2 this is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught and this is Q1 Q2 
So here we have got r square to 1. r square to 1, this is r to 1 value is minus r to 1. Now I am going to put the value of r to 1, that is minus r 1 to in, in the place of this one. Since it is square, so if I make it square, this minus will become plus, so it will become r square 1 2. And this is again r cap 2 1. So this will remain as minus minus r cap. This is the value of 2 1 will be 1 2. This is 1 and 2. And let us consider as this is number equation 4. I think you have understood what I have done in this case. So I have put the value of r to 1 from number 3 equation in number 2 equation. And number 2 equation was like that. This is r21. So here in the place of r21, I have placed minus r12. And minus r12 has become here plus since the square. So r square 1, 2. And this is also been replaced by minus r cap 1, 2. This is number 4 equation. Now if I compare number 2 equation, number 1, number 1 equation, and number 4 equation. So what we can we can what we can find from number one and number four equation now from one and four from one and four equation which is number one equation this is number one equation this is f two one and this is your f one two this is number two one equation and this is number four equation if we compare these two equation now what we can gain you see so this is quite similar one by four by epsilon not the same one by four by epsilon not the same Again, this is q1, q2, q1, 2, q2, r squared 1, 2, r squared 1, 2, but this is opposite. This r cap 1, 2, this is minus r cap 1, 2. So I can write that f, f21 is equal to f21 is equal to minus f1. And this is the vector forms of Coulomb's law. This is f21 is equal to minus f1 to it's so simple if you go through it you will understand it so nothing critical we have done just you have you need to understand this diagram and a replacement of all these particular terms so this was vector forms of coulomb's law in the next class we'll discuss a new topic till now thank you so much